In this video, we're going to take the next logical step, and that is to update the BIOS and the firmware to whatever is the latest and greatest for that piece of hardware. In our case, it's the Dell Rack Server R630. Also, just be aware that there is a little bit of noise going on because of the fans and because the server is sitting right next to me. So we'll address that in two ways. One is we'll eventually move that server back into my rack over here. And then secondly, I'll also walk you through in a later video of how to artificially lower the fan speeds if you need to, so you can go ahead and make it a bit quieter as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and proceed with the BIOS update and the firmware update on our hardware. And we'll continue our upgrading of the firmware on the BIOS from the graphical user interface. So in our case, we'll be sitting here at my management computer and we'll open a browser over to 192.168.1.241. It'll redirect us over to HTTPS and it'll ask us to log in, and the default username is root, and the password is Calvin. So our next logical step then is to do some updates. And so let's go ahead and kick off an update or two. And while that's happening, I can also talk with you about some of the other settings here and how easy they are to access right here through the iDRAC graphical user interface. So to do the updates, we're gonna go ahead and click on the update and rollback. And then with the update tab selected right there, over on the right, we're gonna click on the radio button for HTTPS. And then here for the HTTPS address, we're simply gonna type in downloads.dell.com, just like that. So leave everything else blank and their defaults, including the option of ignoring expired or invalid certificates. And we'll scroll down and then click right here on check for update. Now this is gonna take a moment or two to initialize and check for updates. And also it's not going to work if we haven't correctly configured a default gateway. So while that's thinking about it here for a moment, let me also go back and show you the iDRAC network settings, which are right here. Now, initially we configure the network settings at the console of the server itself. So if we wanna modify those, we could scroll down here and then specify the IP address we wanna use. So I use .241 on the 192.168.1 network. And I specified a primary DNS server here and a secondary DNS server. I didn't enable IPv6. So if we wanted to change those values, we could do so right here, but just be aware that if we change the values here, we need to go ahead and reconnect if we are using a different IP address. All right, so let's go back to the update and rollback. So as far as the updates go, if we're buying used gear, it's very likely that there are a few updates that are available. And I would suggest doing them in the order of doing BIOS first, and then after the BIOS is updated, then any of the other updates, but I would do them one at a time. Also between those updates, I'd give it five or 10 minutes just to make sure it is completely done with one update before we attempt or look at doing another update. I also wanna point out that this update is also possible directly from the console or from the monitor on the server itself. I just find it more convenient to do it right here in one-stop shop for the GUI as part of iDRAC. So now if we scroll down, it has some details regarding what can be updated. So if BIOS was one of the options, I would go ahead and click on that first and then click on the install or if there's an option for install and reboot, I'd choose that and then let that continue. And then once it's done the update and rebooted, I'd then go ahead and proceed with the next one. So I already have a few of the updates done. So let me go ahead and let me do the RAID firmware next. So I'm gonna click right here on install and reboot and it is on its way. It's also giving us a heads up that if we wanna check on the status of that job, we can either click right here, fantastic, or we can go ahead and click on the server in the upper left. And with server selected on the top here, we have the hyperlink here for job queue. Either way, we'll get the job done. And that's showing us currently what it's doing. It succeeded in checking the update from the repo. And then as part of our activities, we said to go ahead and apply the update. So it downloaded the software. And then here in a few moments, it'll go ahead and proceed to the update. And that's gonna periodically refresh the screen or we can click right here to refresh to see the status. So I'd strongly recommend to wait until the current updates are completely done, everything's 100%, before we go back to update and rollback and we do the next update. So that's the process we'd follow until every recommended update is done. And as a process of these updates and some of the reboots involved with it, the fan speeds from time to time will kick into high gear and that's some of the noise you hear in the background, especially because the server is sitting right next to me. So back here at the iDRAC GUI interface, here with server selected, if we go to properties, if we click right here in the virtual console preview, if we click on launch, that can show us the screen again, as if we're sitting right there. So on the actual screen itself, it was showing the update progress, which is now done. And so it's doing its reboot. And right here showing us the preview of where it was just a few moments ago. We'll click on refresh there. And let's go back up to the job queue. So it says that the firmware update for the 
RAID is complete and is now doing the background task of exporting the server configuration profile to identify everything on the server. So now that the RAID update is done, let's go back to the update and rollback under iDirect settings. And with the update tab selected here and here, let's go ahead and click once again on HTTPS. Once again, we'll type in downloads.dell.com and click on check for updates. And so we have one last update. So we'll go ahead and select it, click on install and reboot, and then click on OK. And in the background, it's going to do that update for us. Once again, we can go back up here to server, click on job queue. So there's the new job right there. And that's likely going to turn into a download from the repo and then a reboot, and then the application of that update. And if we haven't already launched a console view, we could click launch here, or if we already have it open, we could just return to that window. So based on the update, what I expect to see here is a reboot of the system, which will be reflected right here at the console as well. So once everything is done, we can also go ahead and select the jobs that we no longer want to look at, and so we select them and click on delete and OK, and that's just going to remove them from this job queue. And then once all the updates are done, if we go back to update and rollback, we could check one more time just to be sure. I have nothing down here showing that we need updates. So that looks great. And if we click here on iDRAC settings, we can confirm our versions. So here showing us the firmware was updated on Friday, February 9, 2024. So that pans out. And if we scroll down, here's my network settings for iDRAC. And if I didn't want to change my time zone and such, I could go to settings and right here specify my time zone. So I'm going to go ahead and grab US Pacific, which is where I'm currently at. Click on apply. And if we want to specify an NTP server, we could do that as well. So I'll do that while I'm here. So I did a Google search for public NTP servers and I'm going to paste this in at zero.north-america.pool.ntp.org. That'll be great. I'll click on apply. And if we go back here to server on the left under overview, it can help us confirm some of the details on our server. So here is the BIOS version. There is the firmware version for iDRAC. And as we continue to scroll down, I'm going to take a look at these logged events. And so I only have one power supply plugged in. So that's why I'm saying the other's lost. And it's also showing here my riser cable or interconnect is not connected. And that's because I had some damage in shipping. So I had to remove that riser from the server. So those are acceptable, no problem. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and make sure we have a hard disk that's physically installed. So the game plan that we're going to have is I'm going to install a little flash drive and a little USB port on the motherboard. And that's what we're going to do actually do the install of the ESXi 2. And then after ESXi is installed to that flash drive, I also want another physical drive for the heavy duty storage. And that's where we'll put the data store for this ESXi host. So I'm going to go down to storage, down to physical disks, and we go to setup. There's the controller where the drive is connected. So that happens to be a solid state drive. Now this server came in with absolutely no disks whatsoever. So I had a little SSD, I installed it in slot zero and that's what we see right here. Now to actually use this in VMware, we need to create a virtual disk using that physical hard disk. And to do that under storage on the left here, we're gonna click on virtual disks. Now it's saying here we have no virtual disks, so we'll click on create. So I'm going to go ahead and call this disk slot zero. That's the physical slot that it's in off of the front of the physical server. And for the layout, I want to use RAID zero. The media type is SSD. Fantastic. And for the capacity, let me scroll down and see how big it is. 931 gigabytes. I'm going to go ahead and use the whole thing. So 931 and then scroll down and specify I want to use this disk and then click right here, create virtual disk. So that's in the process of logically creating this virtual disk using that physical hard drive. So we click here on job queue, it takes us to server and job queue. And here we can see that job running. So once that's done, we'll then have a server that has updated firmware. It'll also have a virtual disk that we can then use to put a data store on as part of vSphere.